bus wiring. So you'll want to build a bus. Well, in every bus, you need wires to get that electricity where you want it to be and to make your life more comfortable, convenient. This is Bus Frequently Asked Questions, where we tend to delve into little subjects that you ask questions about. Bus wiring. Where do we put it? What do we use? What do we need? There's a lot of things that you can find out by Googling. And those are charts. Those charts are very important. And I'll put links below so you don't have to Google them. But those charts are, what wire size do I need? If my wire is 80 feet long, do I still need the same size as an 8 foot long wire? No. The longer the wire, the thicker it has to be. And wire gauge is an interesting thing. A 2 gauge wire is a lot bigger than an 18 gauge wire. And a 4 aught wire is way bigger than a 4 gauge wire. Yeah. The wiring numbering system isn't exactly what we think it should be, but nonetheless, it works. It's been that way for a long time, so we're not about to change it today. So know that the bigger the number, the smaller the wire. And if you put a slash and a zero behind it, well, then it becomes even bigger. So 4 aught, so 4 slash zero, is a lot bigger than a 4 AWG. From there, what do we do with all these wires? We tend to have two completely separate systems in a bus. One is 120 volt AC, and the other one is 12, 24, 48, whatever number you choose, direct current or DC. And the two can coexist, but they should never meet. Are you liking these videos? Well, you can help us make more. Yes, in this special internet offer, you can hit a like, you can hit a subscribe, and even the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Now back to our regular programming. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of them is called hot skin. So you're walking along beside your bus, you give it a loving little pat, and zzz, oh, you get shocked. That's hot skin. And that means you've got power going to the frame of the bus somehow. There's a lot of different ways of getting power to the frame of the bus. One is a shorted wire. But if you've just installed your system, let's say yesterday, and you get hot skin, then you probably got something that's called bonded wires, meaning your neutral or the white wires on an AC system and the ground, i.e. the green wires, are somehow connected together. With your voltmeter, it's very easy to check. Check between the ground and the neutral, and if you have a connection, find where that connection is and eliminate it. When you're using a standard household breaker box, a lot of them come with the neutral already bonded, because in a home, that's the standard way of doing it. In a bus, you should never have bonded neutral inside the bus. Now, your neutral will eventually be bonded when it's plugged into shore power or your generator, and that's where the bonding should happen. But the bus, in electrical terms, is considered a sub-panel because you're plugging into another panel. And that first panel, the one closest to the grid, is the one that has the bonded neutral. Beyond that, we don't want to bond anything because creates all sorts of funky little sparks here and there that we really don't want. Now, as far as your direct current system, whether you use 12, 24, 48 volts, that's up to you. The higher the voltage, the smaller the wire gauge can be. So there's a incremental savings there in weight and in cost. But on the other hand, finding 24 and 48 volt components can be a little more expensive and a little more difficult. So it's a trade-off here and there. But if you're carrying high amounts of amperage, the higher the voltage, the lower the amperage. The lower the amperage, the smaller the wire size, the less heat is created, everyone becomes happy. Now, in a DC system, or direct current system, it's two wires. It's not like your AC system that has three wires. And those three wires being your live, your current, your feed, however you want to put it, i.e. the black wire, the neutral, the white wire, and the ground. In a DC system, you just have the power and the ground. Now, some people will use the frame of the bus as the ground. And in the automotive world, that's highly accepted. That's how every car is. They don't have wires that return to ground. But you want to keep your bus separate from your house. Think of it as a trailer that's built on to your frame. You don't want to be connecting the two. You don't want to be using your chassis as the return all the time. 
You can do all sorts of funky little things to the computers in your bus and other things. So you don't want that. And for terms of safety, by having a return ground back to the source every time, you can trace things. Now, when we build a bus, we do something differently than most. We don't put any wires in the walls. No. The wires are probably the last thing we put into the bus other than flooring and trim. Because we want to have access to that wiring at all times. We want to be able to, if there's a break, be able to isolate it, find it, and fix it as quickly as possible. And if you put it inside your walls, then you put your cabinets, your furniture, your decoration, everything up, and then you drive a nail through a wire or a screw through a wire. Well, you're screwed. Yep. You'd have to take all of that out again to isolate the wire. Not fun. We've built buses and we've renovated buses. And when we're renovating a bus, it gives us a bit of insight as to how they were built and what's happened over the time. When a bus has been on the road for 30 years, things tend to vibrate a little bit. Things to tend to break. Well, some of the buses we've taken apart had been on the road more than 30 years, and the results were interesting, to say the least. First of all, everybody thinks that for your AC system, you need to use flexible wires. You can. It's not a bad thing. But Romex, or standard 14-2 solid core wire, has actually proven in our case to actually hold up better than the stranded wire. I don't know why. I'm not about to go into many long theories on it, but just know that in our case, the buses we've taken apart, we found that the solid core wire has held up better than the stranded wire. Again, that's up to you to find out the theories behind that. It's not the goal of this channel. The other thing when you're considering wiring is breakers and fuses. You should have only one thing on each fuse, or only one thing on each breaker. When we took this particular bus apart, there had one string. So from the breaker, going to a wire, going to a receptacle, another receptacle, another, had 10 receptacles on the same fuse, or on the same breaker. Not a good thing. And the reason that's not a good thing is, first of all, they may have overloaded it at some point, but secondly, this is a moving earthquake. Things move around, things shake, things vibrate. We're not going to be parking this bus for long, we hope. So it is going to be moving and shaking. That being said, if a wire breaks, if something happens and we need to pull a fuse or close a breaker off, we're only losing one item. And we know exactly where that item is. And we know exactly where that fuse is. And we know exactly where the wire is between the two. Again, a case for not putting stuff in the walls. Finally, your wiring. Again, as I mentioned in the beginning, the gauge size is important. And your fuses and breakers are not necessarily there to protect the items that you're using. They're there to protect the wires. So your fuse size or your breaker size should be in accordance to the current carrying capacity of your wires. Don't exceed it. Again, lots of charts you need to look at. Sometimes they can be boring, but they're necessary and you need to understand it before you start building something. Now, the electrical system in a bus is not that complicated. People make it out to be some very diabolical thing that requires decades of study. It requires intelligence. It requires you to understand basic principles and respect certain things. But once you know that, you can do it yourself. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. And any suggestions for future bus conversions, frequently asked questions, I'm all ears. Thanks a lot.